Hi, welcome to Max 7 tutorial number 28, Multimodal Music Machine, part 1. God, I love this thing. All right, well, our plan Gosh, I have so many windows open. There we go. Our plan is to combine our keyboard that we've made here, though this is using a B patcher, with our rhythm machine way, from way back in tutorial 12. Before we begin doing that, let's um, get this thing all cleaned up so that it resembles something that we'd like to add our rhythm machine to. Now, before you start all this, you should have a kind of an overall idea maybe of where you'd like to put your rhythm machine. I imagine mine up on top. So I'm going to start rearranging my window <clears throat> so that I can do that. So here we go. We'll just unlock this patcher. We'll bring all this stuff down here. We might encapsulate it soon, but right now I'm just going to I'm just going to take it easy. We'll leave the encapsulate encapsulating for a little while later. I'm going to take my whole B patcher and stick it over here right at the edge of this whole thing and notice how nicely the keyboard stays inside there that really is the glory of the the B patchers once you got the offset right they really work well so let's see so we even though this stuff is all in the B patcher and this stuff that I have up here is not in our final product today, I can stick this thing right here on this thing if I want to, if this makes any sense at all. I'm going to say that it does for the moment. So we're going to put panic here and I'm going to um, grab all of these and move them down over here so that the keyboard tells them what to do. There so it's kind of like keyboard MIDI, keyboard electronic, keyboard sampler. Okay. I got that. Um, and what else do we want in here? We do want to be able to turn the sound off and off, but it would be confusing to see the microphone. So I am actually not going to stick the microphone in there. Or if I do, I'm going to um, make it so it doesn't um, click. I'm going to put the speaker up there so that people know to turn the sound on. And now we see one of those funny first problems that you have. Do you see how it's only become the um, the outline of the squares there, um, just those those four outlines. That's because this is behind the B patcher now. So what we want to do is rearrange that. We we'll go up to the arrange while it's still highlighted, and say bring it to the front. And there it is, right up at the front. Now we're not worried about all this other stuff because it. I mean, we're not worried about the B patcher because once we put this in presentation mode, all this stuff is going to lock to where it is. So what else do we want over here in our piano that we need to control? We have this. We're going to want somehow to tell people to the, how to, whoops, going the wrong way there. We're going to want to be able to um, tell people how to record, tell people how to uh, turn the loop on, other such things. You might even want to read and write there. Oh my goodness, so many things to think about. Well, um, let's do it the simple way first. And um, we'll just put in uh, nice small boxes like this with X's next to them. And we can dress it up late. Whoops. You know, sometimes when I do that, I just hit Control Z so I don't have to reposition them. This time I will actually Option click on it. And then just rewrite inside there, loop. And then I can option click on that. What was the other thing I wanted to uh, loop? Um, record. Oh, that's going to be tricky. But um, <laughs> well, let's. While we're considering that, let's just move the loop down there. 
So here's the X that says that we're looping. Yeah, we'll have a special dress-up fashion show later. How's that sound? Does that sound like fun? I hope so. And here's how we'll here's how we'll deal with the record thing. We'll click the loop, we'll click the toggle, we'll option click on them, pull them down here, and say record. <laughs> and then we'll resize that so that you can actually see record all in one line. Whoops, got a little jump there, but uh, then you connect the uh, toggle uh, down to record over here, and that will turn our recorder on and off. Now, there's a nice thing that you can do. Remember, we made it so that if you hit the plus sign, it would record. So let's go over here, click on our toggle, and then go over here to the inspector. If you don't have the inspector over open, just uh, click the little I button here. And... Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hint! We need a hint for crying out loud. Hint. What's the hint? The hint is um, or press quotation marks plus quotation marks. Now, I put that in there just right over here in the little hint window. Or press plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and click back in our window here. And now, when we lock our patcher and come over, I just locked my patcher. You see when you hover over this X, it says, or press plus. And that would um, cause it to record. Now, um, if we do hit plus, do we want that X to turn on? That's the real question. Um, sure, why not? Let's Let's do it. Let's go ahead and cover all the bases here. So we'll put the plus over there, and we'll put the zero over there, and I guess we should take these off so it doesn't get double messages. Delete, and let's just make sure it works. Um, I'm going to push plus, plus, and the X comes on, let it go, and the X turns off, or I can just push the plus on and then turn it back off. Wow, look at that thing just working away. So, um, what else do we need to do? Um, we would love to have this meter over here. Um, unlocking my patcher. I'm going to put my meter up there. Next to the record thing. We don't really want this microphone there. That's just confusing. Um, so I'm going to move that down here with the stuff that I'm going to eventually either encapsulate or, in the case of this thing, the meter that doesn't work, I'm just going to throw it away. Then we have our recorder patcher down there. We've got our key patchers. I'm going to just encapsulate these right now because I don't think we need them any more than that. So let's go ahead. Uh, Shift, Command, E, and patcher. We'll call it uh, keys, John or whatever you happen to be making yours. And I'm going to put this down here too. So it's just a storing stuff down here for the moment. And then the other thing we wanted was to be able to um, have this selector that we were using for our sampler. Um, now, here's the... I could say I don't want to give it away to you guys how to make a really good interface and this is the wrong way to do it. I could say that. But really, just because I'm trying to give a demo for crying out loud and I don't have time to make a perfectly beautiful interface, I'm just going to do this. I put that little U menu up there and I put all this stuff down here. So it does have the read and write stuff. Tell you what, that'll be for later for fancying up. Right now, I just wanted to get the basics of all of this splattered over here so that we have everything working, but we have everything where we want it. So let's go and drag um, over all of this stuff and go over here and make sure it includes in the presentation. 
Okay, so all of this stuff is now included in the presentation. Let's go ahead and hit that presentation button and see what it looks like. Beautiful, beautiful. Whoops, <laughs> I forgot. I always end up with all these objects up here because I'm pushing keys. I, I put it in presentation mode, but I didn't lock it. So there we go. And we'll turn the volume up. We'll uh, see how the cello's working. Whoa, is the cello working with loud volume? Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, we can check everything, make sure it's all still working, but we know it is. Yeah, great. All right, well, look at that. We've got our keyboard over here, and we're doing just fabulously. Um, I know many of you have already made uh, one keyboard. This is another keyboard um, with more devices, so it's going to be a greater challenge to make this um, user-friendly, but I know you will figure out how to do it. But let's us try to get back on track here. Um, we're going to unlock our patcher and get out of presentation mode. Um, and what we'll do is we will go get our old Boom Chicka Chicka patcher. I told you I had more patchers open. They're all over the place. So if you remember, let's go back to our other one for a second and push save. Okay. Um, and then we'll go back to that boom chicka chicka. Okay. Remember boom chicka chicka? It, uh, it does this. Well, if you lock it, it does. Nice. So if you remember, I, I put in this sort of dial version of the of the control matrix. We have this um, nice air, uh, line going across here, and all of these controls. Now we can do this one of two ways. We could make this into a beautiful patcher in and of itself, and then put it over here with a B patcher, and that would kind of make a lot of sense. But actually, I'm hoping to incorporate them together. So what I'm going to do, after I stop this thing, so it's kind of distracting, is just take this whole thing, uh, unlock it, and copy it. And I'm going to take it over and just throw it in the other patcher. So there, copy. Ha! And uh, I'm just going to put this away, and that way it'll be safe for the next time I need it. Did I actually change anything? Eh, probably. Okay. So now I'm going to paste the um, the rhythm machine in here. And there it is. For crying out loud, don't click anywhere if your stuff pastes all over your other stuff. You get one shot at this. Click on something and hold it down and drag everything over here where you can work with it. And I, that's what I've done. And now we're going to figure out how we want our rhythm machine and keyboard to kind of function together here, right? So my feeling is that things that you want to be able to control will probably be um, your, the speed of your rhythm, You'll want to have access to this so that you can adjust these. You'll want access to the voices. Do you remember these were the voices here? Um, for anyone who is doing this, this is tutorial 12. I also made this thing automatically go back and forth between uh, one rhythm and the other, and I'm going to undo that now because obviously that's something that we might want to do at some point, but maybe we don't want to do it now. Um, so... Um, sometimes I like to, since we have this nice big, uh, red rectangle here, um, 
I'm going to make another rectangle here just to work on top of. And I like to use the, the panel object sometimes. So I'm going to type new panel. And there I got my new panel. Just go ahead and sort of make it fit over here. And um, I guess we should make it a similar color, uh, which we can do with the old paint bucket here. Um, hello, panel. Uh, I believe this that was red and purple. We'll try red. Ooh, that's really red. How about that? That actually looks similar. And then this was... Oh, no, I guess I better make it upside down, right? So that it... Oh, uh, we'll see. Mm -mm -mm. I'll go back to those standard colors and pick this. And maybe it'll all fade together. That's funny. Oh, that's the border color. Where's the other... Where's the other one of these? Meh. Okay, okay. All right, I pick you. Okay, and what about you? Um, right, oh, here it is down here. So I picked purple for the top, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted, yeah, I did want purple for the top. And then for the bottom, that's this next one over. We wanted to try that pink, so they would kind of fade together. Do we like that kind of sunrise kind of thing going on there? And I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. And... Wiggle it around till it says that it's matching. Oh, that looks so good. And now, something that I like to do just to make sure that um, I'm not irritated to death with this panel is that I'm going to um, I'm going to include it in the background. So go up to Arrange, include it in the background, and then go up to View and lock the background. So now, whatever we do to this thing, see, now it just acts like background and uh, and it stays put. Uh, this, by the way, will not. It'll keep moving around and those things will move out from under it. So be careful with those. Um, what I'm going to do is leave this over here and then just push Control uh, Command Z and it'll put it back for me. So be careful with all these. They can be moved around, but at least this is going to stay put for a little while. So the kinds of things that we need over here, well, we need our, our, our rhythmatoid device here. And so I'm just going to grab it and move it over there. And, you know, this could be an opportunity to change it if you want. I'm going to keep it simple today and just, uh, you know, kind of see what happens. So the lines light up. They'd sort of tell you that, okay, now you're in the middle. Now you're lined up with something else. Okay, I'm going to just center it. And then I want a an on-off button, of course, um, for the rhythm device. So I'm going to... Go ahead and stick that over there. Maybe we'll make that a little bigger. Um, and we're going to need to put some numbers in there. This is always a, a bit of a an ordeal for me. I think I'm just going to put a number box over there for the tempo or maybe a slide. I'll put a slider over there with a box. How's that sound? I think you guys have done that before. I wish I could steal one of these, but I can't. They're locked in that patcher. Um, so we'll put a number over there. I guess that would be confusing if it was right there. Uh, we'll put it here. Oh, that's even confusing. They're all confusing. Good thing we made that thing part of the background because I want to put a slider here for the speed, and, and I think you would be able to tell that that's supposed to um, make the speed go faster. So I'm going to make a 
new object called a slider. And we are going to make it go this way here. Kind of get that feeling of speed. And then you can change this to whatever colors you want, of course. And in mostly I care about the knob being purple for some reason that can't quite. And the background, I think we could actually make the background kind of clear. So that it's sort of there, it's kind of there, but it's not really there. That didn't work at all. What about that? Kinda, kinda, kinda. And let's see what we got here. We'll lock that and, well, okay. So uh, we always had this problem with the, um, with the, numbers from this box because they'll go from 0 to 128 and what we want is a sort of inverse of that um, we want when this thing's at the very slowest speed for it to be a very long time that the metronome's going and when we get up to the top here we want it to be a rather small number like maybe probably 50 at the best so what we can do is make the um, is do an equation out here that'll make it go backwards, or we can use the scale object, which it actually does that for you. So why don't we come out here and stick in that scale object, new, scale, and the input we know is going to be from 0 to 127, and the output, we want it to be from about... Hmm, what would be a good long, like much longer than you would ever want to wait, the slowest imaginable thing? Well, you probably don't want to go slower than a beat per second, but let's make it two beats per second. So 2,000, and we'll go all the way down to 25. I doubt it's even possible to go that speed. Um, and we will plug this to that, this to that, and let's just check on our on our speed here. Go ahead, rhythm thing. Very slow. Very fast. Oh, no sound. There we go. No, still no sound. What did I... Oh, 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 uh... uh everything always ends up at zero when you when you move stuff over. So let's... <laughs> That's coming out. This is counting. Oh! There were no... Ah, I see. We just haven't set anything in here yet. So let's set a few things in here and then we'll check and make sure that it's actually working. So we'll just ramp that up. Come on, come on. That, that, a couple little chickaboomas in there, and uh, I have to adjust that. There's, I know there's, actually, I, I think I know how to adjust that, except, except we have to reach underneath this, uh, this, uh, What's it called? Slider to do it. I'm not. I'm. I, I want to do it, but not that much. Okay. We'll put these at the end so we can hear them nice and loud. And now we'll run it. There it is. Okay, so there it is supposedly going fast. Oh, 
Okay. Well, very good. So our uh, speed works way too well here. We might even want to uh, change these numbers to be a little more reasonable. Let's do that real quick, and then I'll get on with it, I promise. So we'll make this uh, 1,000, and we'll make this one much faster, meaning 10. There. So now when we lock it, it'll... So it can go pretty darn slow. And it can go pretty darn fast. So good. So now we have the beginnings of the stuff we want to do here. Now, obviously, we want to um, get our voice controls over here um, onto there. And we want to get our presets over there as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. Unlocking the patcher. I'm uh, sorry. Locking the patcher and shutting this off so it doesn't drive us insane. And then moving the, whoops, and unlocking it again. And moving this over there. This is our presets. And we can make that a different shape if it, you know, whatever shape you want. If you want the presets to be something that sit down the side in some fancy way that reminds you of the pitch bend knob below it, I'm all for it. Fancy is cool. Lots of presets there. Uh, we only have buttons one and two, but we'll keep them for the time being. And we want to move all these over there, these uh, voices, so we can... Here's one... You know, it would make sense if they lined up with uh, those things there. So they, how about like this? I'm just making them sort of narrow. Like the... Like the uh, rows in the, in, the, in the control matrix. And so these will be the things controlling the voices. I don't know if it really makes sense. I bet you guys can make a far better interface than this. I know you can. So one of the things you can do now um, is to highlight them and then say, arrange these, and just say, could you please um, don't auto-align. That's a nightmare. Align these um, to the left, and then that'll put them all to the left. And then you can... Also, they're all highlighted now. You can do it again and say, align them um, in the, in, uh, from top to bottom. They'll, they'll all go to the top or the bottom if you do that. So uh, what you want to do now is actually is distribute them vertically, and that kind of lines them up that way. And then um, we can't... So we got most most of it, but uh, there we go. Just have to. They'll actually say when they're lined up with each other. I think. There we go. I wasn't very careful doing this, but you get the idea. So now we have. Um, all this stuff that we want to keep in here. So let's highlight this and say include it in the presentation. And now let's look at our presentation by locking it and then putting it in presentation mode. Whoops. Oh, of course. Alrighty, take it out of presentation mode. Um, what I forgot to do was I locked the back room background before I included it in the presentation. So here we go. Uh, go to view, unlock the background, 
select that background and include it in the presentation. Okay, let's try this all again. Now lock it, put it in presentation mode. There it is. So look what you've got there. You've got your cool and you've got your rhythm machine which isn't going all that fast but maybe we could try like a real rhythm here and that would help the rhythm machine seem like a rhythm machine And I'm going to just save that. And pull this one up a little more. And we'll just call that number two for the moment. Shift two. So now when we hit one, it takes those away, and when we hit two, they come back. And we can also change the... Oh, was that one or two? No, it's two. Okay, so shift two, and hopefully then we get some voices for number one and some different voices for number two. I don't know if you followed that perfectly, but if... As you will be back in uh, tutorial number 12, getting this rhythm machine, you can brush up on the uh, use of the preset knob. So we'll get a whole bunch of presets in here soon. But that's a lot for one tutorial for crying out loud. And look at our beautiful multi-use, multi-mode synth going on here. I will talk to you guys soon. See you in the next tutorial.